Hi, this is Crystal Ball, and we're going to be doing uh, the next segment and the Arrhythmia Refresher course. And uh, so you should have watched the Getting Started video to talk about measurements and all of the different normal values. So we're going to continue on in this video. This video is specific to sinus rhythms and the class of rhythms known as sinus rhythms. And so we're going to go over some of those that are there. So before we do that, I want to remind you on the seven questions that you're asking yourself before you look at any rhythm. And the first is, is there a P wave? Okay, so when we look at any strip, the very first thing you need to do is you need to look for the P wave. If you have a strip that you can't make out the P wave well, make sure that you're checking your leads. You want a really nice picture so that you can see the P waves and the characteristic of the P wave. Remember with the P wave, we want to have a nice rounded P wave, okay? We don't want a pointy P wave, a upside down P wave, a notched P wave. It should be a nice rounded P wave. And remember, that means that it's coming from the appropriate spot. So to remind you on the conduction, okay? It should start with the SA node. It should go down to the AV node should have that bundle of his, then the bundle branch, Purkinje fibers. And those are the intraatrial pathways. So in order for the uh, rhythm to show that it's coming from the sinoatrial node or SA node, this is the characteristic that we're looking for. It's a nice rounded P wave. So when you're asking that first question, is there a P wave? You're ask, actually asking, is there a normal shaped one for every QRS consistent P wave? If the answer to that is yes, then you get to answer yes for that question. The next question is, is it regular? And then remember, when you're looking at regularity, you're looking at walking out your QRSs, okay? That's going to tell you ventricular regularity. So make sure that you're checking to see if it's regular. The next question you're asking for every strip that you come up to is, what is the PRI value? Remember the PRI value should be 0.2 to 0 0.20. That's a normal value, and that means three little boxes up to five little boxes. If it's beyond that, then it's going to fall into a different class of rhythms. QRS is the next thing, and depending on which book you're looking at, they can vary, but you want to remember the 0.12 as kind of an approximate, okay? So the QRS should be somewhere in that 0.12 range. The next one is the QT. Now remember the QT does not tell us what the rhythm is. It just tells us more about the rhythm. So the number you're gonna remember for that one is up to 0.40. Again, that measurement will vary depending on what book you look at. This just gives us an approximate value to consider. The next one is rate, and rate is very important because it is going to tell you what the rhythm is, so it's very important that you know how to approximate the rate. Don't count on your computer being correct. Remember the computer is just looking at a point that the QRS goes over, and then that counts it as a heartbeat. So it can actually be wrong. Use the one from our first video that talked about um, just counting your QRSs over a six second strip, okay? And that's gonna give you your approximate value. And then the last thing is your rhythm, okay? So that's gonna tell you what it is. So for the sinus rhythms, we have three of them. And then one that hangs out in there. Okay? So for your sinus rhythms, you have one P wave for every QRS. You should have a consistent shaped P wave as best as my drawing ability can do it. And you want to make sure that um, you're measuring the PRI. So with this one, if you use our questions, is there a P wave? The answer to this one is yes. Is it regular? Remember regularity is simply walking out your Q waves. Does it hit every time? I did pretty good on that, just uh, drawing it. So regularity for this one would be yes. You would measure your PRI. That's the beginning of the P wave up to the beginning of the QRS. 
Again, watch the first video if you're a little rusty on your measurement. QRS and QT, and we would measure our rate. So there's three in this class of rhythms. The first one is sinus rhythm, okay? We have a P wave with this one, obviously. It is regular. The PRI is normal. And the rate is 60 to 100. With the two other sinus rhythms in this class of rhythms, we have sinus bradycardia and sinus tachycardia. They are exactly the same with the exception of the rate. So they both have P waves. They're both regular. They both have normal PRIs. Okay, now your rate is where it varies. So this one's going to be less than 60. This one's going to be greater than 100. So remember, when we're looking at this one being bradycardic, the reason this value is bradycardic is our normal value for the SA node is 60 to 100. Anything outside of that would be considered abnormal. So in this case, sinus bradycardia is less than 60. Sinus tachycardia is greater than 100. Okay? Now there is one rhythm that also falls into the sinus rhythms. And that is sinus arrhythmia. And you'll see this one sometimes where everything else looks pretty good, but it's the regularity. Okay, so with this one, it has a P wave on all of them consistently, but it's not regular. If you were to try to walk this out, it wouldn't walk out. This one is usually indicative of children a lot of times because the body surface area is more affected by their breathing in and out. If you actually match this up to their um, rhythm, uh, to their breathing, when they breathe in, it slows down. When they breathe out, it picks back up and goes faster. So if you have any eight to 13 year olds at home, feel their pulse, it's probably a little irregular. That's normal for them. Uh, but there's also some different reasons why you can have this. So this would be considered sinus arrhythmia, okay? Everything looks good. It's definitely coming from the uh, P wave, so it's a sinus rhythm but the rate is just off a little bit, okay? It doesn't march out regular. So this is sinus arrhythmia. You can have a sinus bradyarrhythmia if it's less than 60, and a sinus tachyarrhythmia if it's greater than 100. So those are our sinus rhythms. So uh, if you have any questions, you can always check into our Facebook page and ask. Um, but otherwise, hopefully that helps. Look for our next video that talks about atrial rhythms.